reason we are out here is because this entity, Skid Row Housing Trust, a multi-million dollar non-profit supportive housing provider. You know why they are non-profit? Because they get our money. And they take that money to provide supportive housing services to the members of this community. Not just any members of this community, but to the most helpless, Amen. the most hopeless, Amen. the most hurting, Amen. those who are the neediest, Amen. the people who've been on the street Amen. for decades, Amen. the people who suffer from mental trauma, Amen. mental disease, mental illness, people like me Amen. who suffer from addiction, Amen. women who come down here because they've been the victims of domestic violence, Amen. people who got physical handicaps. Amen. That's who they get our tax dollars to provide services for. Amen. And what they want to do, they want to take our tax dollars and put a doggone alcohol outlet in a building that serves the people. No way! You know no beer! Say? Not out here! Not, not, not here! here. No, no wine, no beer, not ever, not here. No wine, no beer, not ever, not here. No wine, no beer, not ever, not here. Amen. Now, is Dr. Woods in the house? See, when your name is Dr. Woods, you don't really need. I want to hear from Dr. Woods. No real introduction. Dr. Woods, thank you so much. Now, this is a beautiful sister, all right? I have expertise in public health and I've worked in public health for over 30 years. And one of the issues that we have fought for forever has been to create safe environment for people to live, dwell, play, work, and to be able to have positive, positive influences. It flies in the face of science to actually have an on-premise alcohol outlet Amen. in a facility that houses mentally ill, those in recovery, okay. and others who have our reason for creating policies, you always hear them talk about evidence-based. Yeah. Then let them show you where the evidence is that when you offer an addict alcohol and advertise day in and day out because remember this is their home Amen. so every day they're going to have to come here mm -hmm. every day they're going to have to pass by mm -hmm. every day they're going to have to smell the fumes mm -hmm. every day they're going to have to hear the gaiety Amen. every day they're going to so if okay. home is not safe then where do they have to go? Right. Oh. now you have another issue here and that happens to do with research the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Department of Housing and Urban Development have already created guidelines for healthy homes and houses. One of the guidelines speak to a basic premise and that basic premise is that people need to have a safe place to dwell where they are not exposed to toxins. Now tell me if alcohol is a toxin. When you look at the basic guidelines, the second question that needs to be asked is, has the particular owner of this facility been in compliance with developing safe housing based on the basic principles of HUD? Now the other third issue is very, very critical. It has to do with encouraging excessive drinking. Mm -hmm. Were you aware that those who provide on-service premises of alcohol, they must be responsible if a person drinks to excess and creates harm to others or their environment? So a basic issue has to be answered 
here, those who live here, come down to have a meal, but also buy or purchase the alcohol and beverage, this facility will be responsible for monitoring whether or not a person has consumed to excess. If they have mon not monitored correctly, they will be fined and they are subject to be closed. Or sued. Right. Or sued. So then how can you have a facility for individuals who are overcoming addiction, but yet you provide the substance that if it's not their substance of choice, it very well may be a gateway drug. That's right. A fourth issue has to do with teens and children. When they talk about binge drinking, that's seven, five, seven drinks in a one week period of time. Taking place a lot of times in the closet, a lot of times, or in a person's home. So then you have provided another vehicle for young adults to become addicts. This is incredulous to think that someone who is receiving any types of funds, it's irrespective of whether it's federal funds or not, that they would provide substance that will facilitate detrimental and self-destructive Amen. The research is clear on that. Amen. Now related to the mental health issue, for the last about four years, the Department of Public Health and the Department of Mental Health before it was defunct, funded through the Mental Health Service Act, something called reducing disparities among ethnic populations. Uh -huh. And that included Asian Pacific Islanders, Native Americans, people of Hispanic origin, African Americans, and lesbian, gays, bisexual, and transgender individuals. For the African American population, I was the lead researcher on that project. Yeah. I want to share with you in closing, and I have comment, I have copies of this. This is our policy brief, where we have shared with the Department of Public Health in Sacramento practices that are important for people to be able to have and maintain balance and well-being. Thank you. General Jeff. General Jeff was one of the first presidents, one of the first people that called this out. Thank you, General Jeff. Because no wine, no, no beer, beer. Not, not ever, not, not here. here. No wine, no beer, not, not ever, not here. No wine, no, no beer, not, not ever, ever, not here. My name is General Jeff. I'm an outspoken community activist. For those that don't know, I don't play, I don't take no mess. And I want to say it is not right for Skid Row Housing Trust to serve alcohol and demand and try to apply for an alcohol permit where you have residents here that are struggling with alcohol addiction and recovery. That is disrespectful to the very people of who they say they house and provide social services to. There's a lot of us that really need the support. A lot of us are really struggling. They're feeding off of our energy to see how much that can help them in their recovery efforts. Okay. So no matter how weak you think you may be, just by standing here today and coming together, we're standing strong for our fellow brethren who may be weaker than us. We must remain strong, we must remain fun, and we must keep up the fight. Let's go! <laughs> My name is Jorge Castillo and I'm with an organization called Alcohol Justice and we work to regulate the alcohol corporation. And people ask me all the time, so what's wrong with alcohol? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with alcohol in Los Angeles. One person dies every four hours in LA because of alcohol. You hear that? One person dies every hour in California because of alcohol. And the city and county have to pay up $2 billion every year because of alcohol harms. And what else is wrong with alcohol? Alcohol has taken away our fathers to prison. It's taken away our mothers to addiction. It's taken away our children to juvenile hall. It's helping them drop out of school. So there's a big problem with alcohol. And we need to make sure 
that the folks that are trying to recover from alcohol and those that want to have an opportunity in life don't get affected by those that are trying to profit from selling a drug that takes down our community. So we support your work. We're here to support everything you're doing. We gotta make sure that people understand that it's enough. We've had enough already. Right. No beer. Not ever. Not here. No wine. No beer. Not ever. Not here. No wine. No beer. Not ever. Not here. That's no wine. No beer. Not ever. Not here. My name is John Whitaker. CATC2. Okay. Certified Addiction Treatment Counselor, All right. and I'm also a former childhood actor. If you're over 40 years old, you might remember Family Affairs, oh, Sigmund yeah, and the Sea yeah, Monster. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was yeah. cute, man. Anyway, oh, my that's show. it. Beside that, right. I'm also a person in long-term recovery. Right. That's right. right. That means that I have 16 years hey. without Woo. alcohol or drugs. Sixteen plus years ago, I was a crackhead. Come on, talk about it. Crackhead. I would come down here and had to show my lip or my finger so I could get some dope down here. Preach. Skid Row Housing Trust is on track. Skid Row Housing Trust is on track if they think that people in recovery who are here and they just recently come off the street are going to be able to live peacefully and continually without drugs or alcohol in this facility. Thank you. I got 16 years off of crack. We got to take Skid Row Housing Trust and give them a program so they understand what we got. Thank you very much. My name is Terry Marcus. I'm a neighbor from Boyle Heights. And we're fighting alcohol. I've been fighting alcohol since the 70s. We have reduced alcohol, 356 licenses, to 220. Wow! 220! 220 is too much. And we are part of CD14, and I'm asking our councilman, Jose Wiesar, to be accountable to the people here. Yeah. 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 And is it, is it necessary, and is it convenient to have one more liquor license? No, no. no way. No. And that's what we're going to have to say tomorrow at City Hall. No, no more. No. Ya basta. Ya and basta. And I want to congratulate all of you. My husband died as an alcoholic after Vietnam. He couldn't give it up. And I still feel the pain today because I see his pain. And I saw that there was no place we could go that there was not temptation of alcohol. Thank you very much. So, um... I'm Charles Porter with United Coalition East, and uh, our, our program been around since 1996, fighting to clean up Skid Row, make it safer for everybody. When we first started working in Skid Row, people had a view that this is Skid Row, the people don't care about their neighborhoods. And that's not true. People that live in poor neighborhoods want safety, just like people who live in lofts want safety. And when we st first started working to clean up Skid Row, we went to the city. We said, we need y'all to clean up these liquor stores, these hotels. They told us, the city told us, well, this is Skid Row. What do you want us to do? Well, we told them, you do what you do in any other part of the city. You know, So we've had to fight for years to clean Skid Row up. And we did that with a lot of success because people care about their neighborhood. You know? And so uh, this this part of that, this voice is letting people know people care about their neighborhood. Nobody wants to live in a rundown neighborhood. No. Nobody wants alcohol on every block. You know, and so that's something this is on Main Street, but Main Street is still Skid Row. Yeah. All the redevelopment downtown, they trying to turn it into downtown, the new downtown. But this is Skid Row. We got services here for people in recovery. We're trying to protect the people. We're trying to create a healthy neighborhood. And uh, I recently went to a, a neighborhood council here where they were talking about this issue. 
and one of the board members on the neighborhood council said, alcohol has made downtown what it is today. <laughs> and so that's the vision that a lot of people have for downtown. Their vision is we need more alcohol, more pa places for people to drink, party, turn it into an entertainment district so people can come down here and have fun. The wine, the